In the last video, we learned about the bind directive and its usage with inputs, text areas, single select dropdowns, and multi select dropdowns. In this video, let's learn about its usage with a single checkbox, a checkbox group, a radio group, and let's also learn how to submit the form data. All right, let's start with the single checkbox form control. In our job applicant form, we want the user to let us know if they're okay with working remotely or not. Like in the case of other form controls, this also can be implemented in three simple steps. Step one, add a new property, remote work. And this is going to be initially false. A single checkbox typically indicates true or false, which is why we initialize the property with false. The checkbox by default is unchecked. Step two, we are going to add the HTML. So div tag, input, type is equal to checkbox, ID is equal to remote work, and after the input, we are going to add a label. For is going to be remote work, and the text is going to be open to remote work with a question mark. So that is step two. Step three, bind the property using the bind directive. Now for a checkbox, we bind to the checked property instead of the value property. And this is very important to make note of. So bind checked is going to be equal to form values dot remote work. Let's now save the file. Make sure the styles from before is not commented out and head back to the browser. We should be able to see our checkbox. In the form values object, you can see that the value is false. If I check the checkbox, the value is now true. So based on the state of the checkbox, the value of the property will either be false or true. Now that we understand how a single checkbox works, let's understand how to work with multiple checkboxes or a checkbox group, if we can call it that. In the job applicant form, we want the user to select a list of skills they are comfortable with. Let's add HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as three checkboxes, and the user can select more than one skill. Again, three simple steps. Step one, add a new property. Skill set, and this is an array as well, since the user can select multiple values. Step two, add the HTML. Now to save us some time, I'm going to copy paste the HTML and walk you through the code. We have the label for the checkbox group, which is skill set. Then we have three checkboxes. The first one is HTML. The label is HTML and the value for the checkbox is also HTML. We have the for attribute on the label, which corresponds to the ID attribute on the checkbox. And of course, the input type is checkbox. Similarly, we have the second checkbox for CSS and the third checkbox for JavaScript. Now step three, bind the property to each one of the three checkboxes. But this time, instead of binding to the checked property, we bind to the group property. So bind group and this is going to be equal to form values dot skill set. I'm going to copy paste this on the other two inputs as well. If you now format the file, save it and take a look at the browser, you can see three checkboxes for the skill set input. In the form values object, the property is an empty array. If I select HTML, the same is pushed onto the array. Select all three, all of them get pushed on to the skill set array. Our checkbox group works as expected. 
All right, let's take a look at the final form control, which is the radio group. Let's say we need the job applicant to select their years of experience. It could either be zero to two years, three to five years, six to 10 years, or 10 plus years. The user can select only one option, which is why radio group is the best form control for this purpose. Let's see how to implement it again in three simple steps. First step, create a new property. Years of experience. This is going to be an empty string. Step two, add the HTML. Now the HTML is very similar to the checkbox group. So I'm going to copy paste the HTML and walk you through the code. We have a label for the form control, which is years of experience. And then we have four radio buttons. Each of them have a label and an input of type radio. We also have the ID attribute equal to the for attribute on the label. The value attribute on the input is also set. And you can see I have also included the bind colon group directive, which is our step three. The binding is with the new property years of experience. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, we should have the four radio buttons. The initial value in form values object is an empty string. And when I select a radio button, its corresponding value is reflected. A radio group control works as expected. All right, now that we have a good understanding of how to work with the various form controls, now, Let's understand how to submit this form data. We begin by adding a submit button to our form. So after the radio group control, a div tag, a button, and the text is submit. Now it so happens that when the submit button is clicked, the form emits a submit event, which we can listen to using event binding. So on the form tag, we bind to the submit event. So on colon submit, and let's assign an event handler called submit form. This submit form is going to be a function which we can define in the script section. So function submit form, and the function receives the event argument. By default, a form submission will cause the page to refresh. Prevent that, we call event.preventDefault. And in the next line, we simply log to the console the form values object. Ideally, you would want to send this object to an API endpoint as the request body, but for now, I just want you to get an understanding of how to get hold of the form data when the submit button is clicked. Let's save the file. Head to the browser and open the console. I've also quickly changed name to be of type text rather than number. I'm going to fill in all the form values. And click on submit. If you take a look at the console, you can see that the object is logged with all the values that we have filled in. And one last thing I would like to mention here is about event modifiers. Instead of writing event.preventDefault, we can add a modifier to the submit event. So let me remove the event object and the corresponding statement. On the submit event, we specify a modifier using the pipe character followed by the modifier name. That is going to be prevent default. If we now go back to the browser and submit the form, the page still doesn't refresh. Similar to prevent default, there are a few other modifiers which I will leave for you guys to explore. 
All right then, that is pretty much the fundamentals of farm handling in Svelte. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.